Hello there, my name is Makhors and welcome to BBS 1.7 highlights video. In this video, actually I'm gonna show you quite a number of features. Some are good, some are big actually, and some are miscellaneous. Even though they're miscellaneous, they're still pretty cool and could be used, but it's a niche use. Anyways, let's get into it. So the first feature I'd like to get out of the way is HTTP-based asset syncing mechanism, which is basically you can step a web server and then place files there and then synchronize with other people who have the same URL. So basically here I have a category in the settings, in BBS mode settings, called CDN, basically called, which stands for Content Delivery Network, but it's basically just a web server. Here I have URL and token. The URL needed to specify where this web server is over HTTP, and the token is needed for uploading rights, basically, if you like to upload some stuff. So here I have the script already like uh, downloaded. I have here also the on GitHub the script source code, so you could like run it on your own web server. The script itself is not that complicated, it's only like 176 lines of code. All you had to do, all you have to do, you have to set it up with like Python 3 on the server. I'm not going to go into details, it's more for people who know what to do. So I'm just gonna give you a basic overview. So what I'm gonna do right now, I have like completely empty assets folder, and I have here a script to start. So I'm gonna open in terminal. Oh, over here, like show more options, bash. And now I'm gonna start the SH. It's gonna start the server on this like AP. If you are hosting on digital ocean or something like that, you have to change the host IP right here. So in the script. Yeah, I'm gonna use that one specifically. Then uh, I can demonstrate how it works by basically adding a couple of models of my own. So it's, see, I had to create models folder, otherwise it would go into the assets folder di directly, which isn't the place where you would like the models to go. So now I'm gonna press F6 and there's a CDN category. I'm gonna click download and actually download two models, as you can see, it's chameleon and a butterfly. So now if I'd like to upload models here, what I gotta do is basically take the upload token, which was somewhere, let's see, over here. I go and open here, and I'm gonna take the upload token over here. You should change it to something else when you're gonna host. And uh, here I'm gonna paste the token. And wait, first I would like to demonstrate what happens if I don't. So here, upload, nothing happens. However, if I'm gonna specify a token, and upload, it actually uploads all of that stuff. And now, wow, that's the wrong folder. And now in assets, models, I have here all of the stuff that like the files, that I have on my client's uh, assets folder uploaded. Keep in mind that whenever you download, it doesn't actually delete all of the old files, it only adds new ones so you wouldn't lose the process or like the assets, it just downloads. It could replace some of the models, yes, but it's not gonna actually like remove other folders. Keep in mind that this feature synchronizes for everything. Like we're talking not only models, it could be audio here, it could be textures and stuff like that. Everything that you have in the assets folder over here will be synchronized from the HTTP server, but also will be, could be uploaded from there. So particles, models, audio and stuff like that. So yeah, this is a very useful feature for teams who work with the same model set or like, Assets and stuff like that. 
So this is pretty useful, but it's a very niche use for teams only. So yeah, this is the biggest feature in this update. And I think it's going to change the way you code animate. But if you got used to the art workflow, it works too. So what added was is the gizmos. So this thing with axis like blue, green, and red is called a gizmo. And now you can actually go and click it and then drag it. Yeah, that's right. Beside that, if you press R, you can change it to the rotation. And if you press S, oh S, you can change it to scale. With scale, you can hold out to scale now axis. With um, rotation and, for example, let's call it with translation, you can press Q. Really, first I'm going to rotate a little bit. So like that. I can press Q in order to change it with the keybind over here. I can change it so that it will be rotating on the local axis, which is actually the second row here. Or if I press and change it to the translation, I can actually move them on the local axis. This isn't the ultimate version of this feature, but it's the way I implemented it because it was really hard to do the math and stuff like that. But it was taken from uh, Elgato Pro 3000, not 3000, 300's CML edition version, and I implemented my own version. Basically, it's, it was initially in one of the forks. I'll link it in the description if you'd like to check out. How, so yeah, this is really cool. And you can do like, you can probably pose it way easier than you would do with sliders. It really depends on the person. But so, yeah, make sh sure that you understand that this doesn't work based on the camera position. It works on left, it's to the negative direction and right to the positive direction of these physically values. If you don't like gizmos, for example, you are used more with using the these keys in order to change the transformations. You can go to settings and disable gizmos over here. So now you can use the keybinds as they used before. So yeah, I think that's gonna make the life easier for animation. Next feature I have that I actually borrowed from CML edition of BBS mod is actually called 3D models. So Elgato has added to his fork 3D models. It's basically known like the extruded ones. So if I go and pick, for example, a player Alex zero, you would see that now these models have extruded layers. This looks really nice. It uh, doesn't have the same logic as with Blockbuster mode, but it's still pretty cool. Let's try a different one. So different model. So Alex Benz 3D, let's see on the legs. You can see that these 2D cubes are, I mean, <laughs> 3D cubes are actually also bent with, with the, I guess the knee, the lower part of the limb. So yeah, this is really cool. And the last feature that was taken from BBS CML edition fork port thingy by Elgato Pro 300 is basically model blocks now have an option called look at and basically what it does it makes the model block look at the player. So if I'll place a ton of model blocks you would see that they actually all look at me. This is pretty cool and can be used for certain kinds of videos, uh, like rock ones, I guess, or for NPCs and stuff like that. But yes, it's purely visual thing. I kind of like it. It works with uh, player models, with mobs as well. However, I think if you use custom models, it wouldn't work correctly. <laughs> you have to actually specify in the config to make it work, which is basically you have to specify the anchor. So let's go to the folder of this chameleon models folder. Here I'm going to create a new text file. So config.json. I'm going to open it. 
in here. If I remember correctly, I have to specify here. So it was, let me see how it works exactly. I think it was head, head, anchor, anchor, and then constraint 45. And now it actually looks. So here I have head, I have anchor, I have add, and uh, the constraint is how much, like, how much degrees does it take for the body starts to rotate. And that, oh, there is also, if you'd like to make that pitch, <laughs> if you'd like to disable the vertical look, you can do it this way. Now it's going to rotate only horizontally. So yeah, that's that's a pretty cool feature. Thanks to Elgato Pro 300. Another useful feature is when you have an audio clip. So let's say I have here bonk fart. Ooh, probably I need to change the offset here. <laughs> ah, that's a good <laughs> that's a good sound. Yeah, it's totally not distracting. So now in the video settings, you can enable or export audio. It has a specific sound uh, audio encoder arguments. So now, and then I'm gonna. Ooh, I didn't set up. Wait, really? Oh yeah. I'm gonna record. So if I go to videos folder, it's gonna generate the WAV file that I don't really need. But now, if I'm going here. It's actually gonna combine the video with the audio, which is useful. It's only gonna use whatever you have here in the uh, in the timeline added with the audio track. So yeah, keep that in mind. So it can be used mostly for the organizational purposes. A useful one-time feature for beginners who set up BBS mod is uh, basically if you let's say download the FMPEG and then extract it somewhere on the disk, you actually have to go and then copy the path. But instead now, once you just extract it, you can right click here, find the FMPEG and then it's gonna paste here a FMPEG. So that only works on disk C and uh, yeah, it's <laughs> useful to avoid actually like copying the full path. It actually finds it on your uh, hard drive. See, it doesn't work on other operating systems though, because it's way easier. You just install it via either apt-get or brew on macOS. There's a cool feature for organization of keyframes that was added by Funkified in 1.6.1, I think. It's basically keyframe, shapes, and colors. So what you can do now is, for example, you can go and select multiple keyframes and then give them a different shape. This is really cool if you like to organize your keyframe somehow. So let's say I'd like, here's I have a clapping animation. So what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna take all of these guys and I'm gonna change it to, for example, triangle is when it's like crossed. And then for open ones, I would say I would use diamond. And I also can like change these guys to like maybe a different color to a pink and then it would be the default one. If I'd like to go and reset it, I just click square and then right click and reset color. But for organization, it looks really nice if you'd like to see and spot certain like recurring actions and stuff like that. Last but not least, there's a really cool feature added by Sweat End. It's basically now it fully redoes how the audio tracks works. Now you have multiple categories where you can uh, like like and like to put it into favorites, and then you can also extract sounds from the Minecraft itself. So let's try this. You can take any of these sounds that I really like Amethyst ones. Mm, here. You can click on the mod and then this file would appear in this list and you can actually go and open folder and then it'd be over here as a file. 
you can extract these sounds technically from um from minecraft this way but also you can like go and record it with the audio tracks as i enable the, the export audio and if i go to the videos folder oh and here this one you'll hear the sounds so this is really useful and you can like like them and then you can only show the, <laughs> the audio that you'd like so yeah pretty cool so yeah that's pretty much it like there are more features there and mostly it was bug fixes and changes to the keyframe editors and stuff like that but overall this was a quite nice update i think and also keep in mind that i'm actually gonna take a little break like not little but like <laughs> a mildly big break from bbs mods development you can expect some like i guess bug fixes or crash fixes updates but overall i don't really want to do any updates for quite a while so yeah um thank you for watching and have fun animating bye